is a video for how to answer question four on the AQA English language paper one. Um, there are other videos for how to answer the other questions, so feel free to go through those ones. But this one will look at question four in detail and will give you example answers. So what is being assessed? So AO4 is what's being assessed, which is to evaluate text critically and support this with appropriate textual references. Being able to select a well-chosen range of details from the text, show a perceptive understanding of the writer's method, provide a detailed critical evaluation of the effects on the reader, develop a convincing and critical response to the statement in the question. This one is worth 20 marks, which is 25% of the entire paper. So the question, you'll be given a statement based on the text and asked to write to what extent do you agree? You will need to find evidence that supports your opinion whether you agree or disagree with the statement. Language features and specific words and phrases will need to be assessed. And you need to evaluate how the writer creates those feelings in the text. This is the first example, so from extract one. But hark, what is that? A low moan had fallen upon our ears. There it was again upon our left. On that side, a ridge of rocks ended in a sheer cliff which overlooked a stone-strewn slope. On its jagged face was spread-eagled some dark, irregular object. As we ran towards it, the vague outline hardened into a definite shape. It was a prost prostrate man, face downward, up on the ground, the head doubled under him at a horrible angle, the shoulders rounded and the body hunched together as if it was the act of throwing a somersault. So the extract is from The Hound of the Baskervilles by Arthur Conan Doyle, written in 1901. Here is the question. A student, having read this section of the text, said, The writer makes the moment when Holmes and Watson find the body very dramatic. I can feel the tension rising as I read it. To what extent do you agree? So you can agree or disagree with this statement. It doesn't really matter. You just need to remember that what you think as the reader is correct. Most times it will be easier to agree, but it will depend on your own thoughts and feelings. If you disagree, you're not wrong. You're the reader. Possible answers. The question, but hark, what is that? Makes us want to read on to discover what has been heard. A low moan sounds as if somebody is suffering or in pain. The words, there it was again upon our left, give us the impression that the men are moving continually closer to the sound. The exclamation mark suggests desperation and urgency. The description of the cliff face as sheer and jagged implies that the setting was sinister and dangerous. The writer builds tension by revealing the body slowly. Conan Doyle encourages readers to imagine a vague outline changing to become a definite shape. The way the writer positioned the body face downward delays its identification and builds tension. So turning your point into an essay. Now that you have your points, you need to organise them into sentences that make sense and connect all your answers. Think of the vocabulary you'll use and how you want your answer to sound. Go for sophisticated vocabulary and punctuation. Organise your answers so they are easy to read and understand. We are trying to gain marks. So example answer. I do agree that this episode is both tense and dramatic since it portrays the discovery of a disfigured body and the gradual and dreadful revelation of its identity. This drama begins with Holmes asking, when Holmes asks, hark, what is that? Conan Doyle then goes on to define the noise as a low moan, a sound normally associated with, a pa with pain or suffering, creating the impression that Holmes and Watson are closing in on something sinister. From this moment, the reader shares the men's feeling of dread and anticipation as they rush towards the place where the moan emanated from. The writer's choice of setting, a sheer cliff and a jagged face, enhances the drama because a sheer cliff seems perilous and jagged implies something sharp. Conan Doyle also builds dramatic tension by slowly revealing a dark, irregular object. 
he then further delays the moment of revelation as the vague outline hardened into a definite shape, implying that the two men are moving closer and closer to the corpse. The strange positioning of the body develops the tension further by obscuring its identity for even longer because it is prostrate and face downward upon the ground. Conan Doyle deliberately arranges the victim with the head doubled under him at a horrible angle, leaving his readers waiting to discover who it is. This is an example from the second extract. It was a short street of semi-detached villas facing a high blank wall that, as I passed, I saw a blind move halfway up, revealing a woman's face. A gas lamp, the only one the street possessed, was nearly opposite. I thought at first it was the face of a girl, and then as I looked again it might have been the face of an old woman. One could not distinguish the colouring. In any case, the cold blue gaslight would have made it seem pallid. The remarkable feature was the eyes. It might have been, of course, that they alone caught the light and held it, rendering them uncannily large and brilliant. Or it might have been that the rest of the face was small and delicate, out of all proportion to them. She may have seen me, for the blind was drawn down again, and I passed on. Extract from The Street of the, the, Street of the Blank Wall by Jerome K. Jerome, written in 1906. Question 2. A student, having read this section of the text, said, The writer makes the woman's appearance at the window very mysterious. It makes me want to find out more about her. To what extent do you agree? Possible answers you could have. The writer makes the woman seem mysterious because of the way she opens and closes the blind, allowing only brief glimpses. Near the beginning of the episode, we are told that the narrator saw a blind move halfway up. Halfway up is used to suggest that there is something being hidden. The feeling that the woman wants to observe the narrator without him seeing her. Her age is uncertain. The narrator thought he saw the face of a young girl and then, when he looked again, it might have been the face of an old woman. Every description of her remarkable eyes adds an otherworldly feel to the woman. Example answer. I agree with the student's statement. This woman seems to be shrouded in mystery since the writer only reveals her in fleeting glimpses as she opens and closes the blind. Even when she does appear, her blind only moves halfway up, so she remains partly obscured. This sense of partial concealment is developed through the narrator's inability to tell if, the, if she is a girl or an old woman, and modal verbs such as might have been and may have seen me are clearly used to enhance the impression of uncertainty. Furthermore, the writer makes the woman seem mysterious in that he describes her as rather otherworldly. The description of her remarkable eyes, which caught the light and held it, rendering them uncannily large and brilliant. These seem unnatural, increasing the sense of mystery surrounding the woman. So what you need to remember. You need to use a good variety of evidence when making your points. The quotes don't have to be long and can be just a word. You see me use just single words to highlight things that the writer has used. Your vocabulary should be ambitious and interesting. Try not to repeat words too often and keep it unpredictable. Try to remember that you are the reader, so whatever you feel is effective is what you should talk about. If a certain word stood out, then mention it. Did you like a phrase by the writer? Mention it! Understand why the writer wrote it that way. So was this useful? Share, like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have a question and I'll see you next time. Remember, click the notification icon. That way you'll know whenever I post any new videos or do any live streams. And I will see you guys next time.